welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Western Stories. In this episode, we have Romance's rendition of Madam 44. Original air dates June 9th, 1952, and I hope you enjoy. The Lux Hour of Romance and Mystery. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, makers of Lux Toilet Soap, the complexion care that can give you refreshing new beauty, presents for your entertainment an hour of romance and mystery. The Lux Radio Theater will be with us again in September. During the month of June, we are bringing you romantic love stories of today and yesterday, and also an absorbing drama of people who walk the great white way. It's an hour of exciting romance and thrilling mystery. Romance, bringing you unforgettable stories of love and romance. Tonight, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap present Michael Foster's unusual love story, Madam 44. Winter came early in New England that year of 1853. I remember the first of November was a remarkable dark day, and Mother and I had tea with the candles already lit. Mother busied herself feather stitching a crazy quilt while I just sat and sipped my tea. I was thinking of the sea tracks of the great California clipper, laden with gold, slamming down to the horn. I'm sure you've done most wisely, Prudence, to come back home to your proper surroundings. I hope so, Mother. After all, San Francisco is scarcely a suitable place for a young woman of culture and refinement. Yes, Mother. Oh, I've had my moments of worry about you, Prudence. I tried to be good, Mother. I'm sure you were. Oh, it's such a pity we must always be poor and that you must teach school. But such nice women teach school. Of course, my dear, but still my greatest regret since your father died is that we can't afford teachers for the cultivation of your singing voice. I'm just as glad my voice was never trained. You don't mean that, of course. It doesn't matter now. Oh, I meant to tell you, Prudence. I've promised that you shall address the Athenaeum Club at our next meeting. Mother, you didn't. Of course I did. The ladies will be most interested to hear of your experiences teaching school in that rude wilderness. Yes, I'm sure they would. And Prudence, if by chance you heard some talk of life in the gold camps. You may touch upon it. It will give a bit of spice to your lecture. You really think I should, Mother? Certainly. After all, the Athenaeum Club is founded upon broad-mindedness. For example, we freely discuss the plight of orphans on the streets of New York, and we've even mentioned such matters as fallen women and actresses. We view the world as it is. That's Wonderful, Mother. And Prudence. Yes? The president of the Athenaeum Club is Mrs. Matchett. Oh, she is? Oh, you don't fool your mother one minute. You're still in love with him, aren't you? No, Mother, I... Nonsense. You've been in love with Hugo Matchett ever since you were a little girl. That seems a long time ago. Anyway, Hugo has always been much too elegant to look at me. You're as good as he is, Prudence. Just because he's rich with his father's bank and all doesn't mean a thing. Oh, but I'm afraid it does, Mother. Perhaps being rich is just what made him seem so aloof and, and romantic looking. But it's also made it impossible for him ever to do more than nod at me. Hmm. Wait till he sees you now. You've changed in those three years, Pruden. You've become, well... A woman. Oh, Mother, you're such a dear. Excuse me now, I think I'll go for a walk. Don't go too far. It's quite dark this afternoon. I shan't. Perhaps oh, as far as the post office. And bundle up well, dear. You aren't accustomed to this New England weather, you know. Yes, 
Yes, ma'am? I'm calling for my mail. Name? Prudence Ledyard. Well, now, let me see. Let me see. There's something here. You say you'd be blowing a whetstone, I bet you, if I couldn't find it. <laughs> ah, here it is. Miss Prudence Ledyard, Quincy, Massachusetts. It's from the Wells Fargo Company. Must be important. May I have it, please? Oh, certainly, Miss Ledyard. Here you are. Uh, you a stranger here? No, I've been away, that's all. Well, why, Hugo. Good morning, Prudence. Uh, how, how are you, Hugo? I'm quite well, thank you. Uh, you know you're the first person I've seen since my return home. I I've been in California. Yes, yes, I believe someone mentioned yesterday that you had come back. Yes. California must have been very interesting. I believe that commercially it has a great future. Well, it's been pleasant to see you again, Prudence. Good day. Good day, Hugo. So, it was hopeless. Again, after all. I walked home slowly, thinking it would have been better had I stayed in California. And I would have, except... Except for Hugo. Of course, I had known it was hopeless ever since I was 16. And now it was even more foolish of me clinging to a childhood dream. Or so I thought... Until a week later, when Mother rushed into my room one afternoon. Oh, there you are, Prudence. Thank heaven. You're dressed. Get downstairs quickly. Mother, what in heaven's name? You go match it, Prudence. He's come to call. You go. Here? He's sitting right in our parlor waiting to see you. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll go down. Ah, good afternoon, Prudence. You go. This, this is such a... Pleasant surprise. Well, I was just passing by, and I thought I'd drop in and see if you would be inclined to uh, go out with me in my sleigh next Sunday. We could have such a splendid drive. Oh. Uh, yes. Yes, I'd love to. Oh, good. Sunday afternoon, then. And shall I call for you, say, at two o'clock? Oh, yes. Yes, Hugo. That would be wonderful. So, we went sleighing on Sunday. And the ice on the twigs of the bare trees was like flowers. And Hugo talked of his job running the bank while I watched his haughty, poetic profile and thought how wonderful this was after all these years. But on the way home, I thought, why so suddenly? However, I forgot in the days that followed, for Hugo was a frequent caller and I grew proud. Until one day I came home from a walk. Mother was sitting in the parlor. The strangest man came to the door a little while ago, Prudence. A gentleman, I'm sure, but in such seedy finery. However, quite sober. Else I should not have said my good man go round to the back door. I'm very careful about tramps, you know. And what did you give him, Mother? Well, I told him how poor we are, but that if he split a full cord of our hard maple, I'd give him a sandwich. He seemed grateful, but rather strange. Green blue eyes. <laughs> You're very observing of tramps. He's a tall, strong looking man, quite handsome. And he had the reddest hair I've ever seen. Mother. Green eyes, red hair. Oh, no. Well, where are you going to? Excuse me, Mother. So. Hi, Prue, honey. I see you've had another fight. Just look at your coat. Your mother did look at it. Yes, and I hope you choke on your blasted sandwich. Well, I haven't earned it yet. So Prue. you followed me home. After all, why can't you take a thousand no's for an answer, you you thick-skinned <laughs> jackass? <laughs> your mother ever hear you talk like that, Prue, honey? Oh. I, I told you in San Francisco at the wharf I'd never take no for an answer. Oh, Jack, look at you. Your what? coat is torn, your shirt's a mess, your hat is, is bashed in it. What happened this time? Well, a couple of toughs tried to take me in New York City, but they didn't. I'm sure. I guess it was mighty vulgar, Prue. What else you want to know? How did you get here so soon? Well, honey, when your ship sailed, I bought me a ticket for the next one, but I got off and I cut across Panama on a mule. It was a terrible trip. But it didn't stop you. No, then I bought me a ship of my own and had them sail it to New York City. <laughs> Still quite the bonanza, lad, aren't you? Slinging your gold around. By the way, where is your money, Prue? Why are you living like this? My money is with Wells Fargo. How could I explain a half million dollars to the good people of Quincy, you idiot? You mean nobody knows you're rich? Of course not. What would they think? Oh. A school teacher with a half million dollars? Oh. I got it. 
You marry me, and they'll think it's all my money. I wouldn't marry you, Jack McCauley, if you were the richest man in California. Well, I'm about the third richest. Who cares? Tell me, are you going to be a rowdy barroom fighter all your life? Not after you marry me. I aim for carpet slippers. <laughs> Of course, I'll take you to Europe on a little honeymoon first. Oh, I can just imagine our cultural progress from one ancient city to another. Especially if you should lose your temper and wreck a hotel like you did in San Francisco. Oh, don't look so surprised. Don't think I didn't hear about it. Well, that was after one of the times you said you'd never see me again. Anyway, I bought the danged hotel next day, so that made it all right. Jack, I dislike you very much for coming here just now. Uh, you still own that hotel? Well, I guess so. I turned it over to a friend of mine to run. A good boy, temporarily down his luck. You'll die poor. Prue, honey, without you, I'm poor indeed. How poetical for a tramp. I was poor when I met you. Remember? You were poor. I was living on a schoolteacher's wage. <laughs> and eating chili beans for a nickel at Joe's. You know, you caught my eye the minute I walked in there. You looked so prim and proper-like. I just couldn't help going over to you. <laughs> Excuse me, miss, you mind if I sit here? Why, there are other empty places. Well, I couldn't find any. <laughs> I really didn't try very hard. Though. I'm quite sure you didn't. Well, now, miss, you'll never get married if you act this way. How dare you, sir? Uh, a lady, by golly, a lady. I knew it, I knew it the minute I saw Will you. Will you please leave? You really want me to? Honest? Beast. <laughs> Now we're getting along better. Waiter, bring me a plate of chili beans. If I had a dollar, I'd buy us the biggest steaks you ever saw. Please. Mm. You must be broke, too, eating in a place like this. Just think, out there, all the money a man could ask. Well, I guess we're not very lucky. I know I'm not. I have missed on every claim I've staked so far. Did it ever occur to you to work for a living, sir? Seeking gold is the hardest work I know. It's gambling, that's what it is. Where do you come from, miss? New England, but it's none of your business. <laughs> I might have known. And what's wrong with New England? School teacher, I'll bet. What's wrong with... Never mind. You know, you have a beautiful voice. Do you sing? Uh, in, in church, I mean. I used to. A little back home. Mm. Pretty, too. You know what? What? I've got an idea. I, I've got a brilliant idea. Look. San Francisco's a big town, got plenty of entertainment here, lots of women. But back in the hills, all over this year, there's nothing but gold camps, and there's nothing in them but bars. There's, there's, there's no entertainment. Now, honey, those miners would give you their pokes, thousands of dollars, if you just went up there and sang a song or two of an evening. Have you gone mad? Well, you would make a fortune, honey. Just give them stuff like, uh, say, uh, oh, Annie Laurie. Just break their hearts. Now, you listen to me, Mr. Whatever your name is. I consider you bold and impudent. And I'd die before I became a, a gold camp entertainer. So there. True, honey, that was marvelous. You were great. You're just great. I'm sure. Well, anyway, I made over a thousand dollars tonight. It'll pay this month's wages up at the Quincy. Honey, even if that claim doesn't prove out, you're doing fine. It'd better prove out. I have every cent I own sunk in that rock. But if it doesn't, you can always marry me. I've got four mines now, all just pouring out gold. No, thanks. But I, I am grateful to you, Jack, for giving me the Quincy claim. Oh, it's nothing. I just hope you'll get rich like me. M maybe then you... No, Jack. How many times must I tell you? The rest of your life, I guess, Prue. Say, you've been practicing with that 44 I gave you? Every day. And you know I'm a pretty fair, fair shot now. I can smash whiskey bottles every time at 30 paces. <laughs> Not bad for a school, Marm. Oh, dear. Why did you have to remind me? Now, don't worry about it, honey. You're doing great. Well, I started it. I'll see it through. Good girl. Good night, Jack. I've got to get up early. I'm riding up to the claim first thing in the morning. Take care of yourself. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> Boys! Greg! Hank! Prue, 
Prudence, where are you? Prudence, huh? Uh, hello, Prudence. Who are you? My name's Gravis. What are you doing here? Where are my men? Your men? Oh, well, me and my partner run your men off this claim a couple hours ago. It's ours now. Hey, Welsh! Come on out, we got company. What's up, Gravis? The lady here called Prudence. Says those were her men we sent down the trail. Beat it, lady. Why, you... You crooks. You think you can get by with this? It's done, lady. It's our claim now. We're going to work it as soon as you get out of here and leave us be. Well, you villains. She's got a gun. Shoot her, Welsh. Mine's at the camp. And so's mine. Well, look out. Hey. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll stop. But you'd better keep moving. Would you like to win $10,000 free of taxes? Then hurry. Enter Lux Toilet Soap's $50,000 contest right away. You don't have a minute to lose. The contest closes in just six more days. Yes, you have only six more days to write the ten lucky words that can win you $10,000. Lux will give you enough extra money to pay all federal and state taxes on that terrific first prize. You get to keep every red cent of that $10,000. But there are loads more reasons why you should hurry and enter this tremendous contest. There are five prizes of $500, 50 prizes of $100. And over 2,000 Esther Williams. You get to keep every red cent of that $10,000. But there are loads more reasons why you should hurry and enter this tremendous contest. There are five prizes of $500, 50 prizes of $100. And over 2,000 Esther Williams swimsuits. It's just about the most flattering swimsuit of the summer. Coal of California designed it for Esther to wear in Metro Golden Mayer's new Technicolor hit, Skirts Ahoy. Yes, there are 2,231 prizes in all. So hop to it. Enter this easiest ever contest now. Entry blanks with contest rules are at your grocer's. But you don't have to wait for tomorrow. You can begin tonight. Just get out a sheet of plain white paper and write ten words or less to complete this statement. Like Esther Williams, I use Lux toilet soap, and here's why. Now, I'm going to repeat that statement, so write it down. Like Esther Williams, I use Lux toilet soap, and here's why. Send in lots of entries. The more you send in, the bigger your chance to win. With each entry, attach two Lux toilet soap wrappers, either regular or bath size, and mail to Lux Contest, Box 10, New York 46, New York. Remember, the contest closes June 15th. You have only six more days, so get out pencil and paper now. Write the ten lucky words that can win you 10,000 tax-free dollars. And now for the second act of Madam 44, as we return to Romance. Gentlewomen from Quincy, Massachusetts, just didn't fight burly, greasy men for the rough gold of the earth. Nor did they get their start as public entertainers in the Sierra mining camps. And now Jack McCauley, one of the richest and toughest men of the California Gold Creeks, had followed me home. He stood before me, his red hair flaming in the pale New England sun. Prue, honey, after I finish splitting these logs, do you think your mother might give me some pudding as well as a sandwich? I'm hungry as a bear. No, you tramp. Prue, I love your temperament, but I'm oh, still... Oh, why hung... did you come here, Jack? It's all right, Prue. I'm a conventional suitor now. After all, I was received by your mother when I came oh, to call. Oh, Jack, Jack. You, you see, I put the whole matter on a proper social basis. It's no use, Jack. You're a rowdy and a roughneck. I'm going to marry a gentleman. You're going to do what? Well, I mean, I... I mean, the man I marry must be a gentleman, not a common brawler. But, Prue, I'm worth... And don't a... tell me how rich you are. I'm rich, too, you know. 
You just finish splitting that cord of maple, eat your sandwich, and go back to your rising in, in New York City. All right, Prue, honey. But you will ask your mother about that pudding. Oh. Jack's sudden appearance unnerved me for several days, although he left town at once as far as I knew, and for almost a week nothing happened. And then one night I was reading in the parlor. It was quite late and Mother had retired. I was about to go to bed too. When suddenly... Jack, what in the name of heaven are you... Rue, honey, I've got to talk to you. I think you're in trouble. Trouble? What do you mean? Well, we can't talk like this. Well, come inside. But your mother might wake up. I'm not quite sure she'd understand. Oh, dear, I forgot. Uh, Go around back then. I'll put on a coat and meet you there. All right, honey. awful pretty tonight. Never mind that. What's this talk about trouble? Of course, you'd look even prettier dressed in your good clothes. Now, see here, Jack. I'm in no mood for your nonsense. Is that what you came here for in the middle of the night? All right, Prue. This is serious. Now, I don't know anything about your personal affairs here, but I I, I guess you've lost all your money, huh? What? Women can't handle money anyway. They need a strong, careful man. Mm, Some deacon like you, I expect. Well, now, Prue, Jack, what in blazes is this all about? Give me a chance and I'll tell you. I'm listening. Well... I went back to, to New York City. Uh, bought me some new clothes. Aren't they handsome? Oh, Lord, grant me patience. I've got a good friend in the New York office of Wells Fargo. I had to go there to draw me out some money for well, the clothes. No, you know, I'm freezing uh, out here, you well, ruffian. This friend tells me something. He tells me that somebody in your local bank here has been making very cautious inquiries about how much money you've got on deposit with Wells Fargo. Go on. Now, these investigations about you were done through regular banking channels, all very proper... Your postmaster must have talked about Wells Fargo mail you've been getting. Seems to have aroused interest. I see. And when were these inquiries first made? A few days after you came home. Mm -hmm. Now, look, Prue, honey, you know I'm a friend. And right now I'd be mighty proud to help out in any little way. There's no need, Jack. You you can pay me back sometime if that bothers you. I can handle it. I, I know how easy money is lost, Prue, but it's sure hard to explain. So you just let me sort of square things up at your little bank in the morning, huh? It won't be necessary, Jack. I brought a couple of hundred thousand along with me to take care of anything. No, thank you, Jack. I'll take care of it myself first thing in the morning. It's been a... a sort of foolishness on my part. A little short-sightedness, that's all. But, Jack? Yes, Prue? Thank you. Thank you for coming here and telling me this. Oh, sure, Prue, honey. Just remember that any time you want it, my dust is yours. Good night, Jack. I think I'll go in now. I left him and went up to my room. There I stood for a moment, looking at myself in the pier glass. Mother was wrong about my having become a woman in the three years I was away. The truth was, I'd become a woman only in the last few minutes, in the backyard there, with Jack McCauley. Next morning, with the illusions of girlhood shattered forever, I walked down to Hugo Matchett's bank. I was the first customer in. Ah, oh, good morning, good morning, Prudence. How nice to see you. Good morning, Hugo. Well, tell me what we can do for you, Prudence, and then we'll talk about the party I'm planning for tomorrow. But business before pleasure, I always say. <laughs> I want to cash a site draft on my account with Wells Fargo. Why, certainly, Prudence, certainly. Here's a pen. I'll make and... it out at the counter. Here you are. A hundred thousand dollars. I hope it isn't too much for you to handle, Hugo. Why, of course not, Prudence. We can take care of this for you. For me? What do you mean, for me, Hugo? Well, I know that you're... That is, I mean, it's... it's, You mean you can trust me. Is that what you're trying to say, Hugo? Yes, yes, that's it, of course. Or is it something more than that, Hugo? Is it perhaps you know the draft is good? Why... Why, Prudence, of course it is, if you say it is. But, Hugo, 
You know I've always been rather poor. Yes, that's true, but I... Well, I'd do anything for you. Hugo, until just recently, you've never paid the slightest attention to me. Why is it you're suddenly so eager? Why, because you're a very pretty girl, Prudence, and a fine girl. I guess I just never noticed before. Which did you notice first, Hugo? Me or my mail from Wells Fargo? Now, I don't know what you mean. Then I shall tell you. The clerk at the post office seems to have been impressed by my mail. He mentioned it around town and you heard about it. I expect you were impressed too, weren't you, Hugo? Well, I... I I'll save you lying to me, Hugo. I am worth half a million dollars, as you found out. I am richer than you will ever be, Hugo. Of course, if you married me, and you would marry me, wouldn't you, Hugo? Well, now, Prudence, uh, yes... I've been waiting for the proper time to mention it. Oh, Hugo, you're such a ninny. And to think I've wanted you all these years. Hmm. Well, I guess I've been a ninny, too. There, I don't want the money. Now, now, Prudence, let me explain. Don't bother, Hugo. It's of no importance. Good day. But the party tomorrow... I can't make it. I'll be packing for my return to California. Everything all right, Prue, honey? Hello, Jack. Yes, everything's in order now. There's nothing I can do, then? Well, yes, there is. You're such a thoughtful fellow, Jack, so full of information. I expect you know when the next ship is sailing. (laughs) Prue, honey, I I never could keep up with you. You won't have any trouble from now on, Jack McCauley. Would you mind getting our tickets? Our tickets? Yes, Jack. Sure, sure. Sure. Honey, uh, there's a packet ship sailing Monday for France. I'm not talking about Europe, Jack. California. California? But we've got to tell my mother something. We've got to explain somehow. Leave that to me, Prue. Uh, Let's start walking home now. The good people of Quincy are staring at us. Indeed. Kiss me, Jack. Now, take my hand. Jack? Yes? Shall I explain why I've treated you so badly oh, all this I time? Oh, why bother? Who remembers the digging after you struck gold? <laughs> oh, Jack. But what are we going to tell Mother? Well, me, I'm going to tell her about an acre of ground I went and bought me in San Francisco last year from a good boy temporarily down in his lot. We'll build a big gray stone house but on it. But how will she ever understand? Well, she's a woman, isn't she? She'll understand it. My life will be complete when I see your mother cracking a bottle of champagne. Oh, dear. But, uh, uh, Prue, honey. Yes? Do you, uh, you think she'll object to me? I don't know. First, let's find out if she objects to me. Girls, have you tried Shadow Wave? It's the most wonderful home permanent ever invented. Millions of women are finding Shadow Wave gives them a more beautiful wave and more easily than ever before. Revolutionary new Shadow Wave has just one lotion that waves and neutralizes in a single application. There's no separate neutralizing step. Simply put up your hair with Shadow Wave's exclusive new French-style curlers. They're the only curlers with end papers attached. Then apply Shadow Wave's new Miracle Lotion. It's the only lotion that waves and neutralizes in one application. And that's all. Yes, everything. No neutralizer, no rinsing, no timing. Just let your hair dry and brush out into shadowy, soft, long-lasting curls. Shadow Wave is guaranteed by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. Guaranteed to give you the most beautiful, the easiest wave you've ever had or your money back. Try Shadow Wave tomorrow. Shadow Wave, 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 wave. Romance is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and brings you the greatest love stories of today and yesterday. Tonight you have heard Madam 44 by Michael Foster, specially adapted for romance by John Meston, starring Joan Banks with John Daner. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Larry Dobkin, Harry Bartell, and Paul Dubov. Musical supervision is by Earl Towner. Next week, Lux Toilet Soap. 
the complexion care that can give you refreshing, lasting new beauty, will bring you another story for your entertainment. Hugh Cave's unusual romance, Murder Island. The Lux Hour of Romance and Mystery will continue in just a moment with Broadway's My Beat and the story of violence dressed in a bridal gown. But first, a brief pause for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening. <laughs>